Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Today we will continue with boost converter. Okay, so what is the boost converter? A boost converter is used to step up the input voltage from a lower to a higher level by opening and closing the switch. So the output voltage will be greater than the input. This is the circuit for the boost converter. As we can see here, we have an inductor, a switch, a diode, a capacitor and a resistive load just like the one in bulk converter. So, what is the difference between the, the bulk converter and the boost converter? So, the difference is just in the placement of the inductor, switch and diode here. Okay, next, to see the relationship between the input and output of this converter, there are two states that needs to be considered here. The first one is when switch is closed and the second one is when switch is open. So, when switch is closed, the diode must be open or in reverse bias. Okay, so the output is isolated now. Then, when switch is open, open the diode must be in forward bias condition so that the inductor current can continues to flow okay to do the analysis two assumptions must be made first we need to assume that the circuit is in ccm or continuous current mode that means i mean must be greater than or equal to zero and the second assumption is we need to assume that the circuit is in steady state or average. Okay. Actually, we also assume that the capacitor here is very large so that the output voltage will be held constant. Okay, so when the switch when the switch is closed, the diode is open or reverse bias, and the input supplies energy to the inductor only. Okay, so using KVL, we will get Vs equal to VL. But VL is also given by L D I L over D T. So rearrange them, we will get D I L over D T equal to V S over L. And this is the waveform for the inductor voltage. And this is the waveform for the inductor current. So, from the figure, we will get DIL over DT equal to delta IL over DT. Okay, DT here. This is the time when the switch is closed. So, finally, we will get delta IL close equal to Vs dt over L. So, let this be equation number 1. Okay. When switch is open, the diode is now is in forward bias condition so that the inductor current can continue to flow. Meanwhile, the output stage here we receive an energy from the input as well as from the inductor. Thus, the output voltage will be large. So, that is the case for the boost converter. Okay. Next, using KVL, we will get Vs equal to Vl plus Vout. But, Vl is also given by L dil over dt. So, rearrange them, we will get DIL over DT equal to VS minus V out over L. And this is the waveform for the inductor voltage and this is the waveform for the inductor 
current and from the figure dil over dt equal to delta il over 1 minus d t so how do i get this this is from here it is the time taken for the switch when the switch is open so t minus dt equal to 1 minus d t okay so for delta il open we will get vs minus vr over l times 1 minus d t so let this be equation number 2 Okay, again, we know that for the steady state operation, delta IL close plus delta IL open must be zero. It means that the sum of the net change in inductor current over one period is zero. So by substituting equation 1 and 2, we will get Vs dt over L plus Vs minus Vr over L times 1 minus dt. So now we can cancel L with L and T with T. So Vs d plus Vs minus Vst minus V out plus V out D equal to 0. Okay, so now we can cancel Vsd with Vsd. So we will get Vs minus V out 1 minus D. So finally we will get V out equal to V S over 1 minus D. So this is the relationship between the input and the output. So in this case, the larger the duty ratio here, the larger the output voltage will be. And if the duty ratio is zero, the output voltage will be the same as the Input and bear in mind that the boost converter will produce an output voltage larger than or equal to the input voltage. Okay, next, by assuming the circuit is using an ideal components, the average power supplied by the source must be the same as the average power absorbed by the load. So it means that input power equal to output power. So, P in equal to P out. So, P in is given by VSIL while P out can be determined by V out square over R. But before this, we know that V out is given by Vs over 1 minus D. So, substituting this, we will get Vs over 1 minus D square over R. So, Vs square over 1 minus D square R. Now we can simplify this by cancelling Vs with Vs. So finally, the average inductor current can be determined by Vs over 1 minus D square R. Okay. And next, the maximum inductor current can be determined by Vs over 1 minus d square r plus Vs dt over 
L and for the minimum inductor current can be determined by Vs over 1 minus D square R minus Vs dt over 2 L. So the difference is just in this sign. Okay. Okay, for a continuous current mode or CCM, I mean must be greater than or equal to zero. And before this, we know that I mean can be determined by Vs over 1 minus D square R minus Vs dt over 2 L. And for the minimum inductor value, L mean, it can be determined by D times 1 minus D square R over 2 F. But to make sure that the boost converter is in CCM, the inductor value must be larger than L min. So usually we will make it 10 times larger. So L equal to 10 times L min. Okay, and finally the ripple factor can be determined by R equal to D over RC. F. So that's it for the boost converter. For more in-depth information, you can look into this book entitled Power Electronics from DW Height. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you for listening and bye.